The Monster Energy Speedway World Cup week starts a big gosh in Poland. We're live for event one. The battle for a place in Saturday's World Cup final starts here. Nine teams start the week with high expectations. Only four will make it to the final. And fans travelling to Big Gosh will have plenty to get used to. Four-man teams, cup final host Sweden, seeded straight to the final. And Team USA are back. And not just any Team USA. Poland hosts tonight for the United States, Russia and a young Denmark at ingredients that will keep fans on their feet for the entire 20 heats. Russia start tonight in red with Poland in blue, the United States of America in white and Denmark in yellow. One team will go direct to the final, two will go to Thursday's race off and one will go home. Plenty to talk about during our event one coverage today. Joining me to work out the kinks in the new rules and the implications to the teams in 2012, former British team member and Grand Prix rider Chris Louie and former American teamster and world champion Sam Malenko. But first, let's give you a quick guide to the 2012 World Cup. Today is event one at the 348 metre Polonia Stadium track, where Russia's Emil Saikutinov is the track record holder. Event two is big for Team Great Britain. The action moves to Kings Lynn in the east of England with the Aussies, the Czechs and the Germans. The race off and cup final are in Melilla, Sweden. And since the rules change to seed the host nation to the final, only one team will progress to the cup final from the race off. So of the eight that start the week, only three can meet Sweden in the cup final. Lots of rules to get our heads around here. Sam Omalenko, if I can come to you first of all. Uh, Four-man teams, how will that make a difference? Um, well, the, uh, the order of the teams, I imagine, is not to get any last place. And that gives you a fighting chance to get through today and possibly get you through to the race off as well. Shortens the event down to 20, uh, 20 heats as well, it if I could sure say. It sure does, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's going to be tough. It's cutthroat now, I believe. And you just got to go out there and it's a world championship and just win every race you can. So Sweden must be happy to be the host nation. They're seeded direct and straight through to the cup final. That's why I said nine teams up front, whereas normally we've got eight. So we've got eight people really fighting for those last three places. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's going to make it interesting. I mean, the, I'm not too sure. I'm not a big fan of the four-man teams. You know, I mean, we've seen how tough racing is in the, in the Speedway World Cup. And uh, it takes one sort of first turn pile up and you, you could lose a couple of riders, which uh, you know, nobody wants to see three-man races. So, um, but yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. I mean, obviously, uh, top teams going to the final, it's all to race for. Let's take a closer look at the teams today. Russia field a familiar four in red helmet colours. I think they, they're going to be fast today and uh, all riders fit and they, they fast, fast enough to win. That's your team captain, but Emil Saifutinov is joined by brothers Grigori and Artem Luguta with team captain Roman Pravazhny. Russian team manager is Oleg Kogushkin. Well, we're familiar with the Russians. Uh, Sam, a good team, um, but only four of them this year. Yeah, I think, um, I think the teams are, there's nobody that's going to stand out and win it um, directly. It's going to be good. Um, Poland will hopefully, you know, do something on their home country, but uh, Russia, you know, they're up for it, and so's all the other three teams. Home saw heroes Poland are under pressure then to go direct to the cup final. For me, this is the biggest uh, meeting for me in my career, so uh, I try to do everything the best for, uh, for my team, and yeah, we want to win. Team Poland is managed by a legend, Marek Cieślak, with Thomas Golov as team captain, Gregor Rilasek, Peter Protasevich and Magic Janowski backing him up. Chris, what do you make of that team? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good team. It's, um, you know, I mean, Thomas uh, hasn't been performing in the GPs. He had that bang on the head in, in Sweden. Um, he hasn't recovered from it yet. And, and a few people said perhaps he shouldn't be in the team. Um, but, you know, he's a, here in Big Gosh especially, he's a seven-time... Grand Prix winner in Big Gosh, you, while he's riding a speedway bike, you couldn't leave him out, could you? Indeed. Well, Team USA make a popular return to World Cup racing, and what a team it is.
Well, I mean, for us, it's uh, <laughs> to be here right now is a, is a, a huge step forward for, for our country and what we're trying to do in the in the in the game. But you know what? Uh, the ultimate goal is a race opposition. If we can get there, man, we've uh, we've probably achieved much more than we could, uh, you know, what we would have expected. But uh, that's our biggest goal. And what a lineup. That dynamic duo of Hancock and Hamill with Ryan Fisher and young gun Ricky Wells, all managed by Richard Child. We wait with bated breath as to what they'll achieve. The only way they could achieve anything better is if they had Sam in there as well. I mean, it's a lovely lineup. Yeah, they were really trying to tempt me to, to come over to Poland, but with my other commitments outside of uh, this show as well, it would be difficult. But I believe that they can go there and uh, you know, hopefully Billy will perform and then I will help him out. So finally, to Team Denmark, and perhaps an unusual team for Event 1. Very exciting. Uh, you know, new riders in the team, and I'm the only one with previous experience. So uh, it's going to be it's going to be exciting, but I think it's going to be good. And as Sesha, the team manager, has lined up a young team with Niels Christian Everson, captain, Leon Madsen, Michael Jepsen Jensen, and Mikkel B. Jensen being the chosen four for Bidgosh. Very young team, Chris. It's a brave move. I mean, when, when you've got Grand Prix riders like Kenneth Bier and Bjarni Pedersen, Nicky Pedersen, Hans Andersen, not a place for one of them. Uh, it'd be interesting to see uh, if they find a place for them in the race off. I'm, I'm sure they will. But it's fair play to them. I think it's, it's good to, to give them a go. And, and in uh, the Jensen's, uh, Leon Madsen as well, they've, they've got a good, solid young team. With some of the uh, team calls that have been made, I mean, does it make it a little difficult to predict tonight? I think it does absolutely. You know, some some you know teams don't have uh, uh, members to make a big squad like Denmark and so forth. But um, it's the the balance of this when you look at it on paper. There's nobody that's really going to stand out and just go out right and win it. I think it was, everybody's going to take points away from each other. Russian perhaps are the uh, boys that make it look that bit. Uh, they're they're more standard. We've seen all of those ride before as a team. Yeah, we have, and and yeah, Bidgosh is a perfect track for the Russians. We know they've got fast equipment. They love racing on the big tracks. So. Um, They'll, they'll feel at home there, Bidgosh. OK, well, we'll take a very short break. When we come back, we'll be going across the Bidgosh to check out the action from the track live. Absolutely extraordinary how massive this sport is in Poland. Poland have become the first team to win it. Three years on the trot. Guess what? Thomas Golub! What a win! It's game on! It matters more when a nation's pride is on the ticket. It's Speedway World Cup 2012. This is event one, and we're live from Bidgosz in Poland. Four teams are lining up, of course, as per usual. There's only four men in each team this year, though. Russia, Poland, USA are back, and Denmark, of course. Very interesting team lineups. But those are your four for tonight. One will go through to the cup final, two will go to Thursday's race off, one will be going home. And as the teams prep for tonight's event, big event, but um, with me in the studio, Sam Omelenko, Chris Louis, uh, Chris, very unusual team makeups this year, perhaps. I mean, Russia, fairly standard as far as we're concerned there, I think, but everyone else seems to have gone for a real mix in this first event. Yeah, I mean, uh, Team USA uh, obviously are fairly restricted with, with the squad that they've got to choose from, so um, I don't think there's any real surprises there. Obviously, the return of Billy is a, is a massive boost to those guys. Um, and Denmark obviously feel that, they, that they've got the strength in this young team that they've put together out of their squad to, uh, to take them through at least to, to the race-off. I think they probably felt that uh, they weren't going to beat Poland in Bigos, so uh, you know, they'd, they'd, they'd blood them through this meeting. So it's going to be Russia in red, Poland in blue, USA in white, Denmark in yellow. Uh, let's talk about the Danish uh, team, if I may. I mean, the oldest one is 23 years old, I think. If I... No, 30, sorry. Yeah, that's uh, it, 30 yeah. is, is uh, Niels. Niels Christian Everson. But uh, Liam Madsen is 23, Mikkel Jepsen Jensen and uh, Mikkel B. Jensen are very young. Um, good way of, uh, if I can use the phrase, blooding your team members, sticking them in a World Cup. Yeah, I think you must feel a bit confident. I mean, you know, with, with 
America, for instance, you know, it's only uh, Greg's real experience and Billy coming in there, an unknown at this level uh, in today's uh, times. So they must feel that they can go out there with the young, exciting guys wanting to, you know, do good for Denmark and, yeah, it's going to help them. Big problem, of course, is, is that everybody really, really needs to join seeded Team Sweden. I said nine teams at the top of the, of the tree. That's because there are nine teams. Sweden are already in the final. That only leaves three places. So at the race off, instead of two of them going through this year, only one nine. is going that's through, right. and that is going to be tough. Well, that's uh, it's a world championship, and it's it's lined up and it's built up to the fact that you bring the best riders out there. Like I said at the top of the show, no zero places, um, no zeros on the scoreboard. If you can avoid that, then you have half of a fighting chance to get to that to opportunity going to the race off. And anything can happen because everybody knows what the pressure is going to be like when you get to that point. Got to say, I, I, I feel a bit of an upset coming on tonight. I, I don't know why. It just I can feel it in my veins. It's um, it's a, you know, Poland obviously should be on paper, you know, favourites to, to scrape through. But uh, at the end of the day, there's, you know, some of these team makeups could, Chris, um, make it a bit lively out there. Yeah, it's exactly as you were saying. You know, with the team makeups as they are, they've. they've thrown in a few surprises and it is difficult to call so you know every team there has got someone that can steal points uh, from the other team's top riders. Um, interestingly I like the way Ricky Wells has been putting the team at four which gives him gate one in heat one which should give him a little advantage I think they just want him to get up to a confidence. If he could ride the track because the track's yeah. a difficult one to go on. Well that's what we think here and um, we better give the boys enough time to work out what they think in the commentary booth. Tonight it's Kelvin Tatum and Nigel Pearson. Good evening. Keith, good evening to you, good evening everybody, welcome along and uh, good to be back in Bidgosh, the first time that World Championship Speedway has been here at this famous venue since October 2010 in the final GP of the year when Thomas Golub was the world champion. He is a uh, rider who enjoys massive celebrity status in the town yeah, well, and I've here he is in the opening race of the night in blue and Kelvin Tatum, Thomas Golub will be looking to get the host nation off to a perfect start here. Yeah, the home crown will be uh, right behind him, no question about that. Golub has been absolutely dynamite around this track in the past. And if he can put on one of those sort of displays tonight, then the poles will be very difficult to beat. Jasinski there, uh, his manager, of course, have been working hard lately. He's been out of sorts. He made the final in Gorgeous last time in the GP. But uh, apart from that, hasn't shown top form since that incident in Sweden. Ricky Wells, a rider in white. Rides for Wolverhampton in the Elite League, Sheffield Tigers in the Premier League in the UK. It's a big moment for Ricky Wells, no doubt about that. Billy sure. Hamill watching on the 1996 world champion. Retired, retired five years ago, Hamill. And yet here he is tonight. Can it be a fairy tale night for Hamill and the Americans, we wonder? Well, let's hope so. He has uh, not always had the best of luck here. Broke his back here in the late 90s. So uh, hope that doesn't happen tonight. But here we go, he won. Pavashny in red, Golub in blue, Wells in white, Madsen in yellow. It's Russia, Poland, USA and Denmark in the Monster Energy Speedway World Cup. And it's a good start from Golub. Off gate two in blue, a fine start from the pole, as you would expect. Second place right now uh, coming through is Wells, battling hard here for the USA. And around the outside is Leon Madsen, but Ricky Wells riding a good line in second place here for the USA. And the Dane, Madsen is charging hard, and oh, up the Pavagny. inside comes Pavagny as well. Yeah, a little bit of contact between Pavagny and Madsen there out the back, but Golub looking terrific. Superb away from gate two, hugging that inside line. The track looks slick. Plenty of rain around in Poland over the last 24 hours. They packed it down, but got about in front. Doesn't want to be too complacent here because Ricky Wells is hugging that inside line. Well, Ricky Wells, no doubt, he's using all his experience going from riding the Sheffield track here tonight, but he's under pressure now and he's closing that door on Leo, Leo Madsen. Madsen in yellow, the Dane. This would be an excellent second place for the USA, but Madsen looks to really squeeze hard. The man in second, no doubt about the race leader. Thomas Gollop's going to open up in style. Ricky Wells goes out wide to the oh. wall. Oh, a battling second place yeah. between Ricky Wells uh, well and Leo Madsen. Yeah, Ricky Wells just hanging on there. Madsen had more speed, but just couldn't find a way through. Tried several times up to sneak up the inside, but the, the door was firmly shut. Golub, though, an excellent start to tonight. That will settle the nerves in the Polish camp. Well, just rem remember, of course, Poland are depleted tonight. We should mention that. Yara Kampel with a broken leg. Yeah. Janusz Kolodze with a broken finger. So two key riders, two automatic starters, really, for the Poles are, uh, are actually ruled out tonight through injury. 
and Thomas Golub has got them off to a good start. So the result of the race, a win for Thomas Golub in blue for Poland. Second in white was Ricky Wells for the USA and Leon Madsen third in yellow for the Danes. Trailing at the back there was Will Roman Pavazny uh, for Russia. So it's three points to Poland, two to the USA, one to Denmark and uh, no points to Russia, but Thomas Golub oh, off yeah. to a fine start for the host nation here tonight. Yeah, he gets out of gate too, nice and smooth. The bike hooks up there, a little bit of pressure, but really and truly, it was a very comfortable first ride for the main da main pole, of course, out in front. Here, uh, neck and neck for second, third and fourth early on. Ricky Wells just about hanging on in second place at the death. Leon Madsen had plenty of speed as the race came down to the chequered flag. Wells just, uh, the inside certainly worked out for him. He's an inside rider, he's quite comfortable there. But uh, from the Polish point of view and the Americans, two points at this early stage, that's a solid start for them. But Golub, well, he's leading from the front. Point I made about Ricky Wells riding for Sheffield in the Premier League. It's a big, fast, bold Sheffield, of course, and the type of engines and speed that you need around there are what you need around Bidgosh. Yeah. Uh, it's not the type of technical track that Wells is used to in California or indeed with his Elite League club, Wolverhampton. That's dead right, Nigel, but just jump ahead to Heat 2 now. The man in picture there, Everson, is that question? He is having a fabulous time, and uh, he has been in the form of his life. He's 30 years old now, and he's been in the Grand Prix before. And it looked like he really wasn't going to make an impact once again, but this season really is fired up. Yeah, Everson, who rides for the Kings Lynn Stars in the UK. As you line up, Balacek goes off the inside for Poland in blue. Artem Laguta goes off gate number two in red, former Grand Prix rider, of course. Niels Christian Everson enjoying a real revival in fortunes in his career. And Ryan Fisher going off the outside in white for the USA. This is heat number two. And uh, Niels Christian Everson on paper should be the favourite for this race on form, but Balacek very well, capable, yes. very fast rider in blue. Balacek has been in terrific form this season, hence he's in the World Cup once again, a former winner of the World Cup, of course. Green light comes on. Take try, Jim Lawrence, the referee, has got the race underway, and it's a good start from Balacek. And look at the inside, a clever little move there from the rider in red, Artem Laguta, and round the outside Everson. beautifully comes Niels Christian Everson for Denmark. We said he's a man in form. I said he'd be for the, the favourite for the race, and my word, he is kicking on, and there's a real battle for second. Laguta has it now, third place in blue is Gregor Valachek and the American Ryan Fisher now trailing at the back, but Niels Christian Everson there had to do it the hard way. He did indeed, he came roaring around the outside and showing plenty of uh, commitment, he's fired himself to the front, Laguta settles nicely in second place, a track slick, going to be tough, you're going to have to make your move early and uh, try and hang on out in front, but I'll tell you what, Laguta's riding a super ride in second place, got to say it's a disappointment for the poles with Valachek back in third place and Fisher out the back, but Everson looking good. Yeah, he is indeed. This is a new look Danish side, of course, tonight with youngsters Leon Madsen, Michael Jepsen Jensen, and Mikkel B. Jensen. But it's the experienced hand of Niels Christian Everson that gets Denmark's night off to a good start in heat number two with a victory. Their first win of the night uh, goes to Niels Christian Everson, the skipper, as Kelvin mentioned, has. Grand Prix experience is a top, top performer and is enjoying a great run of form so far this season. He didn't make the best of starts, Everson, no. but he's there with three points under his belt and a boost for Denmark. Without question, Valasek made the start from the inside, but uh, the commitment and the confidence from Everson saw himself to the front. Heat number two then, a win for Niels Christian Everson, Artem Lugutu a second, Gregor Valacek was third, and Ryan Fisher trailed in at the back there so overall now these are the scores Poland on three USA on two uh, actually this is after heat two now Poland four Denmark four level at the top Russia and USA level on two points apiece that's how it looks and a yeah. great ride from Everson there well and his young team he is uh, the leader of the team the captains aside we're looking initially uh, Valasek on the inside makes a good fist of it, but then pulls a bit of a locker, drifts off the inside, and that allows Laguta, who pounces, makes that move early and rides a good, solid ride in second place. But Everson, the bike worked really well here. It's slick out there, but somehow he finds that little bit of extra drive that just sees him to the front as they come out of the first corner on the opening lap. Down the back straight they go. Everson out in front, looking strong, looking confident. 
and Artem Laguta doing a good job in second place. Plenty of talk about the Danes that aren't riding tonight. Kenneth Pierre, Hans Anderson, well, Nicky, Nicky Pedersen. Nicky Pedersen, the three-time champion. Yep. Surprised he's not here, to be honest. Mikkel B. Jensen at 17. That is a bit of a surprise for me, in my opinion. Leo Madsen and certainly Jepsen Jensen have been going great guns. Just wonder um, if Anders Secker is uh, sort of conceding that the race off is their target tonight well, uh, and perhaps bring Nicky back in for that. Well, yeah, there's that, but also Peter Kilderman's hanging around in the wings as well, who's been in great form. And a bit of choice and a little bit of controversy surrounding Peter Kilderman. He is here in Poland, practiced, of course, but uh, can't take his place in the lineup. Heat number three coming up. The reigning world individual champion Greg Hancock is the man in white. He's the current Grand Prix leader at the halfway stage as well of the 12 round world individual series a reminder of the World Cup format if you've just joined us tonight there's uh, events one and two to determine the first two qualifiers for the final to join the seeded finalist Sweden the second and third place teams from tonight and Monday at Kings Lynn go into the race off on Thursday in Melilla Sweden Grigor really good to off the inside for Russia in red Greg Hancock gate two in white for the USA Matt Sayanovsky the World number 21 champion off gate three in blue and Michael Jepsen Jensen off the outside in yellow. He saw him have a terrific Grand Prix in Copenhagen a month ago. Michael Jepsen Jensen and Hancock is up against his protege. Yeah. He's taken Matze Janowski under his wing and has advised him and coached him in the early stages of his career. But they're in opposition here now in the Speedway World Cup. This is heat number three and Hancock's made a decent one. But look at that for a start off the Laguta. inside in red. Gregory Laguta and coming around the outside is the day. Michael Jepsen Jensen as well. But the lead here is with the Russian Laguta. Greg Hancock second. Hancock coming around the outside now. The world champion showing all his class. This is a good race here. Going into Hancock. act two. And a masterful move from Greg Hancock. Fantastic move from Hancock, the championship leader, of course. Round the outside, pass himself to the front. Janowski comes charging through underneath there. Jepsen Jensen into third place. But Laguta made a good move in the first corner, but the world champion didn't have the best of it initially, but fires himself to the front nicely. This will be a real boost for the USA, who trailed in last in, in the last race. That'll, this will put them on five points. And Hancock has got the race under control. A real battle Jepsen for Jensen. now. Absolutely, the points are absolutely vital. Every point crucial. Laguta is second for Russia right now. Third in yellow is uh, Michael Jepsen Jensen. But Greg Hancock is looking supreme here. And Hancock is going to take the check and flag ahead of Gregory Laguta with Jepsen Jensen in third place. And Janowski trailing in at the back there. So one point from the last two rides for Poland in Big Gosh, their home country. And Greg Hancock for the USA, he knows yeah. every track in Poland. He's ridden in the Polish league for years, and here he is in Big Gosh in great form. Looking good, had a nasty incident last week in the Swedish league. Wasn't sure if he was gonna be able to take part tonight, but practiced earlier today and looked absolutely superb there. Really did look. The bike was brilliant. Mid-track, fires himself to the front. Did it nice and comfortably in the end. Superb. Let's just confirm then. Heat number three, Greg Hancock, the winner for the USA. Gregory Laguta, second. Michael Jepsen Jensen, third for Denmark. Janowski at the back for Poland. Yeah. So after three races now, the USA have five. Denmark have five. Poland are on four. And so are Russia. How close is it? Yeah, very close indeed. Initially, the Guta makes an excellent start on the inside. Hancock there just in third place. It's tied down the back straight. Jepsen Jensen then just gets blocked down the back straight. Hancock's aware of him, then goes to mid-track, almost forced to go to mid-track in the middle of that bottom corner there. And he then actually has the speed to actually fire himself round the outside of the Guta. You see what Jepsen Jensen now. Looks like he's, well, he actually got himself into second, but just ran out of room. And then uh, the world champion, the master, just sweeps around the outside and turns three and four early on in the race and gets himself comfortably to the front. Track's drying out fast, Nige. It's a bit dusty out there, it's a bit slick. You've got to make your move early. Understandable that the track is slick, though, because there were heavy storms overnight. And uh, that's why the track is slick. It's prepared in case there is more rain on the way. Reminder, event two is at Kings Lynn on Monday. Team Great Britain involved in the action at the Norfolk Arena Kings Lynn Monday night against Australia. Czech Republic and Germany that's on Monday night we're seeing the result of the previous race once again Greg Hancock from Gregory Laguta Michael Jepsen Jensen and Matze Janowski that's the heat number three result 
And well on to heat four, and after this race, every rider will have had one ride. Looking forward to this race. Billy Hamill back from retirement. Scored 10 points in the qualifier for the USA and Slovenia a few weeks back. But this is a tougher test, no question. Here's your lineup. Piotr Fodosevic goes off the inside in blue for Poland. Hamill side, moving off gate two, red for Russia. Going off gate three is Mikko B. Jensen. Hamill is off the outside here. This is heat number four. And it's a good start from gate two. And the man in red, Emil Saifuganov, as you would expect. Second in blue right now is Protasevic. Hamill's coming through into third at the expense of Mikko B. Jensen. But the lead here is with Emil Saifuganov, established Grand Prix superstar, of course. Hamill well and truly on the pace. And it's really... Oh, and Saifuganov clips the fence on this near side. Just about manages to hold on to the bike. Protasevic in second. Hamill is uh, holding on to third. But Mikko... B. Jensen is going to really pressurise Billy Hamill for that third place now. Yeah, absolutely. Billy Hamill there was threatening early on. They've just been dropping him now. The two out in front. So Fudanov knows this place well, of course, right here in the Polish league. Protasevich has ridden here in the past as well. And the Poles need points. They've been disappointing in the previous two heats. And Protasevich coming in at the last minute to replace Kolodzie, who's injured. Hamill's gone to the back now. Michael yeah. B. Jensen has taken Billy Hamill and uh, relegated him to the back the 1996 world champion a fairy tale comeback but no doubt he's going to find it tough here in big gosh and he is so far emil saifuganov the winner second place in blue pepe protasevic and Mikkel b jensen gets the better there of billy hamill who was holding third place yeah so disappointment for the comeback man billy hamill it has been an extraordinary story and of course the key for hamill is to see the american youngsters come through the system and well, hopefully it won't be too long before we see the US side back challenging for World Cup glory. They have a tremendous tradition, of course. Saifuddinov, the winner. Pepe Protasevich was second. Mikkel B. Jensen was third for the Danes there. And uh, what it means overall now is that after four races, Russia have the lead on seven. Who would have thought that? Poland are on six. Denmark are on six, and the USA <laughs> on are on five. It's very, very close after four of the 20 races here, Kelvin. Not a complete surprise that Russia are uh, having a good night tonight. They're all experienced here in Poland, like these big, fast tracks, and uh, they feel very comfortable. We're watching it again now. Saifudin, of course, favourite for the race without question. He hits the front, and that's where he stays. Protasevich pushes him all the way. Hamill relegated to the back. We've had four races of event one of the Speedway World Cup. Russia are the leaders. Heat five is coming next. You're back for the 2012 Speedway World Cup. Event one is live from Bidgosh in Poland. And they've all had just one race each. Russia then on seven points. All teams have scored a win out of their uh, first rides. Poland is on six, as is Denmark and the USA. Just missing out. Uh, on five points at this moment in time. But it's early days yet, and they are prepping the track at the moment. Sam, if I can come to you first of all. The Americans um, kicked off to a pretty good start. I mean, obviously, the USA, it's a big deal for the USA to come back. It's an even bigger deal, in my frame of mind, for um, Billy Hamill to come back at this level. Yeah, and uh, you you got to consider, you know, what they're racing on. The track is a fairly um, high-tempoed track, and coming out of gate four, both uh, Ryan Fisher and Billy Hamill both, and Billy made a better start than Ryan did off gate four, but really didn't place himself coming off turn two, and that just comes down to race fitness, possibly. But uh, Fish, you know, swallowed up with power loss, I think. Well, Denmark, of course, are fielding a very young team today. Uh, the oldest one is 30 years old, Niels Christian Everson. Let's hear from him. Niels Christian Everson, a lot of the World Cup meetings are about no zeros. That worked for the team then? Yeah, we got our pick points in every race, you know, and uh, battle hard, but. Tracks, uh, tracks slicker than slick out there, so you know, gating is going to be vital and uh, you have to really focus on putting the, the bikes uh, fast from the gate. Teamwork, very important. You've just had a meeting. What was said? What were the boys talking about? No, it was just, uh, you know, we had uh, only gate three and four in, uh, in this section and, uh, you know, we knew it was going to be hard for in the beginning of the meeting to have the outside gate, so, um, you know, we picked points in every race and that was good. There's a lot at stake for every team tonight, isn't there? Sorry? There's a lot at stake for all the teams tonight. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's always, uh, it's the first World Cup meeting and uh, everything is tense and uh, exciting. Right, keep up the good work, cheers. Good work indeed as they come up for Heat 5 then. And there it is, the points as they stand after, well, Heat 4, we should say. Uh, Russia, 7 points, Poland, 6, as is Denmark and USA on 5. And uh, 
you heard at that particular time that uh, a point, you've got to score every time. It's what you said, Sam, in the first place, is you've got to score every time out if you can. Avoid uh, zero places, uh, last places where you get zero points. And if you can do that, then you have a half a fighting chance of coming out in the right place towards the end of the meeting. OK, let's get back to the boys then. It's Kelvin and Nigel. Heat number five, event one of the FIM Monster Energy Speedway World Cup, Bidgosh, Poland. Very, very tight so far. Russia have the lead, but you do get the feeling that the way the teams are picking points off each other, uh, that uh, it could well be a close contest this one tonight. And Poland, bear in mind, no Jarek Kampel, no Janusz Kolodze. Are not going to have it their own way tonight, Kelvin. Well, in the first four races, they certainly didn't. Valasek uh, looked like he struggled, and Janowski looked nervous to me. Here's your lineup: Greg Hancock, the world champion for the USA, winner first time out off gate one. Mikkel B. Jensen, gate number two, the talented teenager for Denmark. Gregor Valacek, gate three, in blue for the Poles, and Roman Pavazny, very experienced rider yeah. for Russia. He goes off the outside in the red helmet colour. Well, the captain of the Russians, he was the only one that uh, failed to score in the opening four races, but they lead the way. A good effort from the Russians so far. The Laguta's looking really strong. Yeah, the Laguta brothers absolutely riding superbly so far. Heat number five, Russia seven, Poland and Denmark on six, USA on five. And it's a good start Hancock. from Hancock off the inside, as you would expect. After the early oh, stages, oh, the on. red light's gone on, and uh, Jim Lawrence has seen something there. The red lights are on, and he's going to call the it race was, back. It was a fraction of movement, possibly, from Hancock, but uh, it was minimal at, uh, at, at, at the most. I don't really know. You know, neither of us reacted to the say, suggest that there was movement. Was it? No, Hancock just makes a fantastic start. For me, no reason to pull that back at all. Well, Jim Lawrence, the referee. Oh, maybe he's gone for the guy in gate three, Valasek, rolling a fraction, but he didn't actually make the start, so why did he pull it back? Well, we did see it uh, at Wolverhampton on Monday in the Elite League how referees do like to uh, see a, a, a clean getaway. All four riders have to be still at the start. Yeah. Well, there was movement there for Valasek, and obviously he wasn't happy with that, and that's why we're back for a restart. But uh, just a little bit of a, um, uh, a comment on the track conditions. They have put some water on. It was getting dusty by heat four, and uh, they have been out there and put plenty of moisture on. It might be a little bit greasy here because obviously they have tire packed the track down, and Everson there in his interview with Steve Brown said it was slicker than the M1. So. Um, uh, it's going to be, it might just begin to make a little bit of material as they continually put water on. Um, so let's hope that happens and we'll see some better racing. Bike change there. And, uh, hopefully, we'll, uh, Pavashny will be now choosing his better bike that's uh, failed to score first time out. Well, the Russians have emerged, haven't they, with Emil Saifudinov leading the charge, but it was Roman Pavashny and Sergei Darkin, really, who uh, led the revival of uh, the Russian side. Mm. And uh, Saifudinov is the next great thing with the Laguta brothers, of course. And you do feel that Russia could be a force in World Speedway for a while to come. Yeah, there's a potential for it. Saifudinov has gone a little quiet on the Grand Prix winning front. He's solidly in the top eight, but uh, without question, he burst on the scene a couple of years back. And that seems to have um, inspired the country on the Speedway front. And uh, hopefully it will continue, but they're looking good tonight. Pravashny on his spare bike. He'll be looking for better things coming from the outside. So, heat number five, second time of asking now. Greg Hancock off the inside. In white, gate two in yellow is Mikkel B. Jensen for Denmark. Gregor Valacek, gate three for Poland. And Roman Pravashny going off the outside with that change of bike. Thomas Golub watching on in the Polish camp. Emil Saifudinov, Grand Prix star, of course. A reminder, the Grand Prix resumes in Croatia at the end of July, but lots of World Cup racing to come before that. This is heat number five. Riders settle. They wait for the green light. And it's a clean getaway oh. from Greg Hancock off the inside. That time, superb ride from Greg Hancock. Sensational start and so typical of the man. Coming through into second is Gregor Valachek for Poland. Roman Pavazny in red is charging hard. And Mikkel B. Jensen is third at the moment, holding that third place but coming under severe pressure from Roman Pavazny. But Greg Hancock 
that was just what we've seen from him over the last 20 odd years a textbook getaway from Hancock yeah textbook start from Greg Hancock he's comfortably out in front Valasek is coming under pressure for Vajni round the outside really beginning to charge hard it's neck and neck for second and third Mick will be Jensen out the back but he's not tailed off the world champion out in front Valasek and Pavajni going for it yeah, Pavasny is no respecter of reputations. He's having a real go oh, here. Done him. Roman Pavasny around the outside. That's a sensational move from the Russian Roman Pavasny. It's Greg Hancock with the lead. Valatek comes back up the inside. Mikkel B. Jensen is there as well. Fearless. Mikkel B. Jensen. Can he pass Gregor Valacek as well? It's very close. Oh! Valacek has gone down. Hancock with the win. Pavazny second, let's hope that Valacek is going to be OK. He's up on his feet. Oh, crowd don't like that, nor does Valacek, but um, you wouldn't if you just fell off coming out of the last corner. I don't quite know how he went down. They were almost out of the corner, and uh, Mickleby Jensen was charging hard. Valacek lost momentum throughout the race and wasn't fast there at all, and the poles are under pressure once again, but the world champion, uh, Greg Hancock, back-to-back -back wins for him, but Valacek is having a tough night. And Russia still maintain the lead after that second place for Pavazny, which was and what hard happens fought. here, Nigel? What happens here? I can't oh, just don't lost really it. know. The front wheels seem to just wash out underneath him. And I tell you what, what happens here? Is there contact? Not really. He just, Not seems, just seems to lose his balance, his composure on the bike, and wipes out an unusual act incident, one that he won't be proud of, of course. And his team at this early stage are under pressure. Yeah, Poland are, uh, are now on six points and are actually bottom of the four nations here tonight. Wow, that's staggering. On their own track, absolutely. Greg Hancock's win keeps the USA well and truly in contention in second place right now. Here's the result of a dramatic heat. Number five, won by Greg Hancock, maximum man so far. Pavazny second, he was last at one stage, got second place. Mikkel B. Jensen third, Gregor Valatek fell, but good to see that he's able to walk away from that incident and as we see now Poland bottom on six points Russia have the lead on nine USA on eight Denmark seven and Poland are on six just looking at Greg Hancock there you can see he's wearing that neck brace that is as a result of the incident that he had last week with Matt Martin Vasulik in the Swedish league looking at the race again sorry Nigel you're about to say something but look, Hancock makes a great start on the inside you know he really was a class apart in this race Look then that Valasek, you know, he sneaks into second place there early doors and looks relatively comfortable for a lap or two laps even. And then all of a sudden, all hell lets loose for second place and Valasek slips back into third place with a great effort from uh, Roman Pavazny round the outside, gets himself into second place. And then uh, the death coming out of the last corner, you know, Mark will be, Mick will be Jepsen rather, he gets into third place and Valasek almost sort of like gets frightened off the bike coming out of the last corner so dramatic scenes yeah these danish youngsters you will forgive us if we get confused between our michaels and our meekles yeah well, um, we've, we've got one of each haven't we <laughs> <laughs> got a 50 50 chance and it's uh, michael Jepsen jensen in yellow in heat number six rides for peterborough in the uk of course and he is the danish rider here race number six it is confirm the lineup for you off the inside is artem laguta for the russians Billy Hamill yet to score a point. He goes off gate number two in white. Michael Jepsen Jensen, brilliant young talent, goes off gate three in yellow. And the old master Thomas Golub going off the outside in blue. Golub and Hamill have had many a sure. battle down the years in the I'll, Grand Prix. I'll say they renew their rivalry once again tonight. Golub from the outside. I'll be interested to see what he does. Well, Golub desperate for points. He's under a bit of pressure here as well with his team sitting bottom of the four nations right now. Golub is the man in blue off the outside, but what a start that is from Artem Laguta. And well, Michael Jepsen, Jepsen's there as well, but Golub is going to try and come through the middle. Here comes Thomas Golub oh, in blue. Oh, oh, sits back and gets the drive going easy. into turn three. He does make it look so easy, Kelvin, he's so right. He has that lead now. Second place in yellow is Michael Jepsen, Jepsen. Third in red is Artem Laguta and Billy Hamill finding it tough out there here in heat number six, trailing at the back. Yeah, Hamill's out the back, looks a little bit uh, outpaced. Golub there, what a sweet move that was in the first corner, just split the two riders and fires himself to the front. Jepsen Jensen's riding a strong race in second place. Gotta say, Laguta looks okay in third, but it, it's all about Golub. Golub owns this track, you have to say. He has won so many Grand Prix here. Ever present in the World Cup, of course, hasn't missed a race 
in the World Cup for his country, looking good once again. Michael Jepsen Jensen in second place for the Danes here, the man who did so well in Copenhagen a month ago in the Danish Grand Prix in the park, and what a night that was, sensational speedway, and he's looking quick here, putting Golub under a little bit of pressure towards the end. Yeah. Golub has delivered the goods though, right place, right time for Thomas Golub with Jepsen Jensen second, Artem Laguta was third, and Billy Hamill, well, he knew it was going to be tough coming mm. back. He retired, didn't he, in what, Five 2008? Years ago. It's a farewell meeting at 2009 at Wolverhampton, and yet here he is mm. uh, back riding again and finding life so, so tough. You well, quite simply cannot go from small tracks in California on a part time basis to a World Cup and just slot straight back in. It's almost impossible. And uh, Thomas Gullop, the race winner then for Poland. Michael Jepsen Jensen was second, Artem Laguta third. Billy Hamill at the back for the USA. And those three points for Poland, a massive, massive boost for them. Uh, it means that Russia are now on 10, Poland on nine, level with the Danes. Yeah. And uh, the USA find themselves on eight points. So, two points separate the Golub. four nations. Golub so often comes to the party, doesn't in the World Cup. Last year's final, you've got to say, he was absolutely spectacular. He doesn't make a very good start initially, but look at this first corner, just sweeps up the inside of Jepsen Jensen, around the outside of uh, Laguta down the back straight. Seeing it again, doesn't make a very good start, but just look at this, he knows his place like the back of his hand, fires himself to the front, and it's, he sort of almost toys with the opposition as the race comes to its conclusion. I've got to say, it's a strong ride from Jepsen Jensen, he gets squeezed out early doors there but he does then get the better of Laguto and gets himself into second place, and he keeps uh, Thomas Golub honest right to the chequered flag. But back-to-back -back wins for Golub, keeps his team right in it. Back-to-back -back wins for Golub, back-to-back -back wins for Hancock. And in the American uh, pit crew, Billy Hamill knows it's tough out there. Mm. And uh, Greg Hancock in his pit corner helping him out now. Heat number seven it is. I have to say, whatever happens, it has been a remarkable adventure for the USA. Great to see them back in the World Cup. I think we're all agreed on that, of course. They have that wonderful tradition going back to the late 70s. The Moran brothers, Bruce Padhol, the world champion, of well, course. They've always Our had... own Sam Omalenko, we should exactly, mention Exactly, well. Sam, back in the studio, of course. He's been part of the World Cup squads in the past. And the Americans have always had fantastic spirit. Niels Christian Everson off the inside. In yellow then, as we see again back in the USA uh, pit corner. Greg yeah, Hancock. They, I reckon they're going to be making some bike changes, setups there. Nice, it's slick out there, and Billy's just struggling to get the bike hooked up. And the Hancock, of course, will be passing on every bit of information he possibly can. Meet number seven, it is then here. In big gosh, who will emerge? Ricky Wells is the man for the Everson. USA in white, but it's a superstar from Everson in yellow for Denmark. What a ride that is. And they're going high and wide. Here comes Gregory Laguta up the inside. Laguta will wind it all on and hold second place right now. Gregory Laguta second. Ricky Wells is third. Trailing at the back is Pepe Protasevich for Poland, who are not having it their own way here in their own country tonight. Niels Christian Everson kicking on under pressure here from the Russian Gregory Laguta. And this is a good effort from the Russian, really pushing Niels Christian Everson hard. Yeah, Laguta in second place, looks really threatening, and Everson made a great start, charged up to the outside, and is hanging on out in front. But the save, it's now trying to put Wells under pressure, but the pole, who knows his place so well, is struggling out the back, and that's gonna keep his team under pressure if he can't get amongst the points, but Everson certainly being chased hard from Laguta. Everson there from the inside, out to the outside, covering every move from the Russian. And here comes Valacek up the inside, Protasevich, sorry, in blue for Poland. Pepe Protasevich gets the better of Ricky Wells in the closing stages. The race winner is Niels Christian Everson, Gregory Laguta second, Pepe Protasevich in third place there uh, for the Poles. And how important will that point prove to be at the end of the night for Poland? You never know. But this is a real topsy-turvy contest tonight because that now puts Denmark on 12 points. It's a big win uh, for Niels Christian Everson. Brilliant and ride. And the Russians are on 12 as well. So Russia and Denmark at uh, deadlock right now on 12 points apiece. Poland on 10, USA now adrift on eight, but still very much in contention mm. uh, for a race-off spot. Everson the winner, Laguta second, Protasevich was third. Let's just confirm the latest standings for you now after seven of the 20 heats here tonight. Denmark and Russia level on 12, Poland 10, USA on eight. The group winners go through to the final in Melilla, Sweden next Saturday. The second and third place teams 
go to the race off. Niels Christian Everson, I tell you what, you're looking at a rider that is in the form of his life. So full of confidence, makes an excellent fist of things away from the inside, right up to the safety fence. Gregory Laguta, though, in second place, just for a moment, looked like he might be able to get up the inside down the back straight. Terrific battle going on out the back between Protosevic and Ricky Wells, and Protosevic there finally, finally, I say, gets himself into third place. I thought Laguta might find a way through, but Everson, as the race goes on, he settles down and wins relatively comfortably. Kept honest, though, by the Russian in second place. But uh, Protosevic, I've got to say, the poles at the moment, they look vulnerable. They need to find the key to it. Riders like Janowski, Barasek, and Protosevic have got to come to the party. Well, Janowski's in the next one. He's the world number 21 champion. Niels Christian Everson, brilliant so far, dominating yeah. proceedings. Hancock and Hamill compare notes as uh, Greg, a regular competitor throughout Sweden, Denmark, Poland. It's amazing. It's amazing. He is amazing. You know, he had a nasty incident last week. He's 42 years of age. He is leading the world championship. He's, he's the current world champion. I mean, he is just in the form of his life. And, you know, bearing in mind, he won the world championship, world championship the first time, 97, 14 years ago. It really is a Cinderella story, isn't it? Hancock and Hamill, the original Turbo Twins. Yeah! <laughs> Back in the Cradley days, no doubt about that. Ryan Fisher goes off the inside in white. Leon Madsen, gate two in yellow for Denmark. Emil Saifudin off gate three in red for the Russians. Matt Sayanovsky off the outside in blue, needs points here, but well, with yeah. Saifudin off out for the Russians, they could well lead this meeting after eight heats here. Yeah, pressure on the youngster from Poland here, Janowski. An awful lot of uh, awful lot of talk about him, you know. Um, people, t you know, he's under 21 world champion. Certainly, has got the credentials to do it, but they need him here now. Heat number eight on a sunny evening in Bidgosh. Mike draw and away from the start. It's a good one from Fisher in white. Ryan Fisher for the USA. Oh, Three nasty. riders hit the deck. Well, Fisher came roaring across from the inside, and it's just they all got there together, and there was contact going in. I hope they all get up. That was a tough fall there. It was a nasty-looking incident. And we'll see it again, of course, but uh, certainly they were there almost level. And uh, Ryan Fisher on the inside just gets there, and there's a bit of contact there. They come roaring through. Oh, that's nasty. Certainly, Janowski riding over the back of Leon Madsen as they get to the first corner. Yeah, it just... You know, Emil Saifudinov, look at the bike, the bike cleared the fence. That's unreal. Yeah. That could have been an awful lot worse, I sincerely hope. We're looking at Saifudinov, now watch what happens here. We've got the domino effect, because Leon Madsen goes straighter than he, that goes straight for longer because Ryan Fisher's coming across from the inside. Madsen lays the bike down. You've got Janowski going over the top of Madsen, then Saifudinov running. Oh dear, oh dear, that was messy. Well, Fisher, to be fair, had made a super start there, Kelvin, and look at how all, wide he goes. Yeah, that's, it. that's the problem, you see, yeah. because it's a slick knife, so they're all chasing for that dirt up high, and he's only got one intention. There's no way he's going around the curb, and he just shuffles them straight up, and they just run out of room. I tell you what, Sai Fudinov, that is very fortunate his bike doesn't land on bodies on the, on the ground. It's amazing, it actually comes back on the track. Yeah, good to see Emil walking away from that. That was a spectacular spell. Right at the start of uh, heat number eight, Michael Jepsen Jensen and Niels Christian Everson, the Danes. Tell you what, Michael Jepsen Jensen looks like he could do with a stake. And Leon Madsen still fella. down. We can keep our fingers crossed that Leon's going to be okay. Nasty looking spill. Carl Blumfeld in the pits area there, helping yeah, Team there. USA tonight. Based here, of course. He looks after Andreas Johnson's equipment. He's got his workshop here. Good to see Saifudinov making his way back. Spectacular action from his bike. Um, uh, we're seeing, uh, is that Janowski got up there? No, that's the, the young Danish boys, the two youngsters, Jepsen Jensen and Jensen there, wandering across the track, having a look at track conditions. But certainly that was dramatic stuff. Good to see Leon Metzen up, because he felt the full brunt of that, um, because Janowski actually rode over him as he was piling into the bottom of the safety fence. And as I say, it was quite dramatic stuff and it was all caused because Ryan Fisher made a reasonable start just had his nose in front but had made the decision to just charge straight across the first corner so we will have to have a restart here's Greg Hancock Greg Hancock a much better start for Ryan Fisher he's got to do it all again now 
Yeah, that's right. I mean, he's, uh, you know, this is this is tough. Practice was cut short for us this morning and, uh, you know, trying to learn the track in, in every heat. So uh, he's talented. That boy can figure it out. And uh, for you tonight, neck brace, one race, not the next. What's the story behind that? I'm just testing something new. And uh, Lee at the people from Lee at, uh, you know, that uh, st started with me in Sweden a few weeks back, we've been testing and uh, I really like the new brace. So uh, we're working on something good. The uh, brake looks like it hasn't slowed you down at all. Oh, you know, it slowed me down for a week there. I was definitely not feeling, uh, not feeling as good as I normally, or as young as I normally do. But it's uh, things are getting better every day now, and I just I'm happy I'm on my bike again. And a tough night tonight, but if you can keep the zeros off the score chart, you've got a chance. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's, the scores are all over the place right now, and uh, we told the guys zeros are not good. We need to uh, avoid those as much as possible. But it's a tough field, man. Keep hard work up. Absolutely, USA. Well, I know Greg very, very keen. To, uh, to see Team USA do well. It is quite a story and great to see Madsen walking away. We will have a restart mm. uh, of heat number eight very shortly. Impor important this. Thomas Gullup there clearly explaining to uh, Masek Yunoski what he needs to do coming from the outside and no better person to learn from around here, of course, than Gullup. Just see there, Fisher just decides to go charging across to the safety fence. Wasn't quite that far. And Everson did the same. Look at the bike from Emil Saifudinov. How that didn't come down crashing down on riders on the track is a minor miracle in itself, Nigel. But Ryan Fisher, Everson did this earlier on. He got there, but they all get there together, and he's decided, well, the grip's right out by the safety fence, and he literally just squeezes everybody up. Leon Madsen gets off the bike initially, but he falls down right in front of the two other riders, and possibly, uh, maybe he, he was the reason that that happened, but he had his nose in front, but tough racing out there tonight. Just delighted to see all four riders get to their feet. Now, when you see a crash like that, Kelvin, it does sort of beg the question, if a rider is ruled out through injury, one rider getting ruled out through injury early in the meeting can really scupper well, a nation's chances when there's no, no replacement reserve. available. No reserve. I don't really understand that. I heard Chris go uh, mention that at the top of the program, and I think he's dead right. You know, four riders, it's tough racing. We see riders get injured, unfortunately, on a fairly regular basis. Um, if you go down to a three-man team, you're out of it. And that is a major concern. When you see a crash like that, it's just good that uh, all the boys have walked away from it. So How good is he riding at the moment? Hancock. Greg Hancock's never ridden better. He's making it look so easy. And I think that's one of the things about Greg is that, you know, he rides easy on the bike. It doesn't seem to take too much out of him. And that's why at the age of 42, he is still doing the business. Yeah, really bear, bear in mind, Kelvin, it's his first meeting back tonight since that crash in the Danish League 10 days ago. Exactly, and that just, you know, that's all, all the more reason to marvel at his form. You know, he comes out there, he doesn't make a great start, sweeps around the outside, second time of asking, he fires himself to the front. How tight is this meeting? Denmark and Russia locked together on 12, Poland on 10 in third place, USA not out of it, not out of it. If Billy Hamill can find the, uh, the key to the track conditions and they could still spring a surprise and get themselves into the race off only one nation will go out of the world cup tonight of these four the group winners will go straight through to the final in melilla and the second and third place team go through to the thursday's race off also in melilla how will billy hamill be feeling now kelvin because well, he hasn't contributed to the point yet it it's will... hard for him we know how difficult it is coming in from well, not the cold, because California is not cold, but if you see what I mean, coming in from California, um, out of retirement, it's always going to be a tall order for Billy, isn't it? Huge ask. Got 10 points in the qualifier, but that isn't the same standard of rider that he was up against here this evening. Billy Hamill is a very proud man. He knew the type of pressures he was going to come underneath under when he made that decision, without doubt. Uh, I just suggest that uh, track conditions are... I've just caught him out a little bit. If he can just get that bike hooked up with some uh, advice coming from his other teammates, then I sense that he will dig deep and find. He just needs to get third places. He doesn't need to win races, but just to keep USA in it, if he can pick up you know, a second and a third here in his next couple of rides, then uh, he will have justified his decision to come back. I should also mention as well that when a team goes six points behind the leaders, if you are six points behind the leading nation, you can nominate a rider for double points as the joker or you can just make a straight tactical substitution if you wish and that's where team managers tactics will have to come into play absolutely but you know now we've got a shorter program we've got uh, you know just the 20 heats not the 25 as in, in previous seasons 
you know, the pressure is on now, Nigel. We're coming to the mid, we're, we're approaching the midway point of the meeting rapidly, and you cannot afford to run too many zeros. You know, we've been talking about that all the time. You know, in the studio, they were mentioning it. Interviews is one out at the track here. So, you know, right now with the rerun of this race, heat eight coming up. Certainly, the pressure is on riders to get to that first corner and get amongst the points. Just remind you as well, Team Great Britain launched their World Cup campaign on Monday at Kings Lynn's Norfolk Arena. And it's Great Britain, Czech Republic, Germany and Australia. And uh, we're looking forward to a visit to the Norfolk Arena on Monday night. Scott Nichols, Chris Harris, Ty Danny Wolf King and Ty Woffington in the Great Britain side. We wish them all the very best on Monday. Absolutely. We've, been, we've seen some super performances from a Great Britain side at the Norfolk Arena. Great track really is a super track always well prepared and th let's just keep our fingers crossed that the weather doesn't intervene heat number eight coming up then here in Bidgosh. second time of asking it's ryan fisher on the inside he'll be looking for a similar start to the first staging of this race leon manson goes off gate number two in yellow for denmark amel seifergen off gate three in red for russia matt sayanovsky going off the outside in the blue helmet color of the world under 21 champion Every race you feel, Kelvin, carries pressure on it because it's...